People don't want cheap things anymore. People want things that uh, solve problems in a different way and actually go beyond solving a specific problem. They want experiences. And by the way, they want all these experiences in a sustainable way because everybody understands that uh, every ounce of gasoline or every hour of light has a cost that probably is irreversible. So we are compelled to create products that are uh, more sustainable. Today, I would say 50% of everything around the world is uh, designed with SolidWorks. Uh, you know, from chairs to skyscrapers to, you know, surgical robots. I'll go to a party or whatever and people will say, well, what do you do? And I always say, well, look around you. You know, the watch you're wearing, probably designed with our software, the shoes you're wearing, you know, the windows in this room or anything. And it's just amazing. It's very easy for me to say what I do and, you know, get the emotional reaction from people. We are at the beginning of our revolution. Right now, there is so much work that uh, needs to get done. If you look at the world of today, our customers, they do not just need to deliver products anymore. When you deliver a product, people expect to have a good experience while using the product. Design is uh, all about experiences, is all about allowing people to be creative and to deliver uh, without really having to deal with repetitive work, things that are useless details. So, for, so design, the future of design is really in artificial intelligence and using that and bringing that into the experience of the user. SolidWorks has been around for, you know, since 93. It's older than I am. Um, and. For a product that's been so successful for that long, uh, you kind of run into this like innovator's dilemma uh, of, you know, what do we do next? Um, and I think that's kind of a nice thing because now we can really uh, take advantage of that and kind of push, push the needle on these newer products. A lot of the things we work with in CAD is jargon or abbreviations, acronyms, all those things. Um, but we're kind of stepping into the world where 3D is just a way of life. You're using it to communicate. We're designing creation tools, tools to bring ideation to production, no matter if you're an engineer, a doctor, a student. We're passionate about understanding what our clients need, and what our users do and, and how they do it today, and, and what problems they're facing, whether it be in design, engineering, in the world, or whether it be with our software. And making sure we, we adapt and we react to that, but also making sure that we look to see, you know, what new technologies are happening. You know, AI, artificial intelligence, where I can just uh, throw one fastener into a hole or made a fastener into a hole, and then click a button and it will go find all the holes in my model and place those fasteners in there, instead of me spending five hours or whatever trying to place 150 fasteners. The future is not just about design. In fact, the future is about our users being able to deliver experience. They cannot deliver a product anymore. When you deliver experience, you need so many things around it. You need to be able to design it. You need to be able to create stunning images, visual images of it so that you can excite other people who are looking at it. You need to be able to communicate about it. You need to be able to gather feedback. So design is no longer just design. I look at like, what the future design is going to be and i don't think it's i don't think it's technology i don't think it's you know new and improved equipment or this and that i, I think it's it's what humans define it to be you know and and that's what makes it so fun it's it's magical and and being able to be on social media now and engage with people and see what other people are creating and doing it's inspiring man and so like i get really excited just seeing what others are doing. And I know that the future of design is going to be controlled by human interactions and uh, what we want to make with it. I think we are a whole special breed of geeks that are, are out there. There's a lot of people that just think in this, I don't know, creative, creative way. And their mind is always thinking about 
how is that made and how, how can that be changed and how can I improve that? I think the next generation of designers definitely have different demands and needs to what someone like myself or, or previous generations had. Um, and what they're, they're really driving is, is what they expect um, and then how easy it is to get what they expect. And if they don't get what they expect, then they look for something else. So what I mean by that is if I cannot get you know, the right design tool that fits me tomorrow or today or now, then I'm going to look for somewhere else. You know, access to data, I, I think that is a lot different than it used to be and there's still a lot to do you know, with a, a worldwide kind of supply chain and, and, and giving everyone access to data and the tools and, and sharing and collaborating. So there's, you know, we have a, a huge focus now on the 3D Experience platform and I think that is really going to help our customers. There are so many things left to do. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, urban planning. Okay, we also like to uh, save the energy, green energy. Also help biological uh, pharmaceutical company to, to do their experiments. So we like to bring, infuse all these applications together. So you, you can imagine that is a whole new uh, system. So there are many, many things to do. No doubt DS is thinking about the future and they always have. I remember showing cloud-based CAD tools on stage at Solar World in 2010. So, you know, we were thinking about the future then, we're still thinking about the future, not next year, not what our customer asks for tomorrow. We're thinking about what is the future of what our customers are gonna need in 10 years. We've never been complacent here, uh, and we, we don't look back on, on the success that we've had, but rather want to look, look forward and you know, we, we really want to uh, bring solutions to the next generation of designers and uh, to, to keep innovating. We need to um, bring more artificial intelligence into the design process. We've, uh, we've already started doing that, but I think, I think there's more to do in terms of how we combine design and simulation into the process in future looking at these cloud set of tools that are coming along, the fact that I can run, you know, the 3D experience platform on my tablet, that I can be solid modeling on my smartphone. Leveraging the cloud as much as possible to, to offload some of the compute power needed by a user's machine is, is extremely important. I think you see that in some aspects of the world today. You're going to see it more in, in design and simulation and even from a data management standpoint. I think artificial intelligence is key. I think our design tools can learn what the engineer is going to do because they do it over and over and over again. And I think the, the overall collaboration of teams, you know, the, the fact that the world is smaller, we can work closer with our counterparts around the, not just the country, but the world. And being able to collaborate on designs is something that we can continue to leverage. I'm definitely not someone who says, you know, connectivity or cloud equals innovation. But what it does is it opens the door and it allows people to connect and it takes away some of the barriers to design and design tools that previously existed that can free them up for you know, being more creative and being more innovative. The so-called two-party paradigm is what we're having right now. We have a CAD company providing the tools and we have the user using the tool to deliver their product design. In the future, it's going to be a three party. Uh, the new party will be the CAD expert or the power user become content provider. The content provider will have their knowledge built into their models. So instead of the user do everything by himself, that he can take advantage of the pre-existing knowledge to uh, streamline uh, the design. I think when a lot of people look at the future of design, they might feel a bit fearful, right? They might think, you know, computers are gonna take over the world, right? But I think it, at, at every stop over the past few decades, especially what we've seen, is that the enduring nature of human ingenuity is here and it's here to stay. And I think what we've also seen is that as computing power has risen and, you know, as we've come up with, with these new technologies, they've been more or less assistive 
And again, they've sort of made it so that more people would have access to do greater things, you know, than they thought that they'd maybe ever be able to do. The real opportunity and innovation to actually move forward is the idea that we need to solve problems, not just through the lens of a very um, strict set of eyes. We often design with um, like a, not a very diverse pool of people. I mean, it's not news, I hope, to anyone who's listening to this, that the engineering and technology world has always been very male-dominated and not very much female-dominated or even just diverse races and ethnicity. So when you're solving problems with a very specific types of user and types of per point of view, you don't see all of the other gaps and holes and things that you might over overlook. Adding in people who are younger, who are older, who have different backgrounds, then you're going to get those, those ideas. So inclusive design, diverse design, all of these things will be necessary no matter what products we put out. Because most of the time, the coolest and most innovative things come from the voices or the places you never thought was there. And I have this feeling as I get older, and I'm almost 60 now, I have this feeling that I'm about to make the same mistake, that I would tell the next generation, no, this is how we do things, where I'm too involved in the past. I don't think I'm in a position to tell them what the future is. I really believe that the next generation needs to be empowered, and we need to let them decide on a lot of the future of the world, because it's going to be their world. We need imagination. We need to imagine a future. We need to imagine new ways to solve old problems. And for me, one of the best ways to do it is uh, to empower as many people to use what the human brains are designed for, which is to imagine, to be creative.